We understand that the PI3 kinase pathway is very important in breast cancer, and mutations in the PIK3CA gene are found in about 40% of patients with metastatic hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer. Alpelisib is an alpha specific inhibitor of PIK3CA and has been previously shown in a phase three trial called Solar One to have benefit in patients when combined with fulvestrant as a com combination therapy in patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer who had previously received endocrine therapy. In that study, we saw about a doubling in the progression-free survival to 11 months from about five and a half months with the addition of alpelisib compared to fulvestrin alone. One of the concerns about Solar One, which was clearly a uh, breakthrough in terms of this population of patients, targeted therapy based on mutations being identified in this large subgroup of breast cancer patients. But one of the, the concerns was that in the current era, most patients who are diagnosed with metastatic hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer are getting combination therapy with a CDK4-6 inhibitor, which since its initiation several years ago has become the standard drug, uh, typically now in the first line because of survival data. And the CDK4-6 drugs are combined with endocrine therapy and most commonly in, uh, with an aromatase inhibitor in the first line setting. There were a small group of patients in Solar One who had had exposure to CDK4-6, but we really didn't have a full understanding of how well alpelisib works in the setting of prior CDK4-6 inhibition in this subgroup of breast cancer patients. The study that was presented at ASCO 2020 was called the BILEAV study, and it's an open-label trial. It actually has three arms, and one arm was reported. They're not compared to each other, but the study was designed in a way to look at a, a variety of different scenarios. The scenario that was presented at ASCO were patients who had had previous exposure to CDK4-6 inhibitors and had just progressed afterwards. They had to have a PIK3CA mutation, one of the uh, 11 mutations that are, were identified in the Solar One trial. And then they received a combination of alpelisib and fulvestrin. In general, these patients had had um, no prior fulvestrin, so they were naive to fulvestrin and had typically received an AI and a CDK4-6 inhibitor. 70% uh, of them had had uh, one line of prior therapy, and a few of them had had some chemotherapy or a second line of endocrine therapy before going on the BILEAV trial. The primary endpoint of this trial was six-month progression-free survival. And what it showed was there was um, a median progression-free survival of 7.3 months for the patients who were in this open label phase two study treated with fulvestrin and alpelisib. That was uh, also looked at from the perspective of response rate. The response rate was 20%. The clinical benefit rate was 45%. So these numbers looked very encouraging because uh, that it was better than one would expect from second line endocrine therapy alone with a drug like fulvestrin as a monotherapy. Yes, alpelisib has certain toxicities, some of which are actually on target uh, toxicities. Uh, PI3 kinase pathway is very important in normal cellular functions in our bodies. And one of the uh, pathways that are, is dramatically impacted by this pathway uh, by this uh, gene and its downstream signaling is the insulin pathway. So it is typical for patients receiving a PI3 kinase inhibitor to have a hyperglycemia. So that's one of the toxicities. The other toxicity that has been found with alpelisib 
what has been skin rash and urticaria. In the BILEAVE trial, a subgroup of patients were treated with, uh, with prophylactic antihistamines, and that group of patients did better. And that has become the standard, actually, in the uh, clinical scenario setting of treating patients with alpelacid to give them uh, antihistamines prophylactically before starting the drug. And in my experience, as well as in the BILEAVE trial, that has cut down the uh, number of rashes and urticari urticarial reactions, as well as decrease the, uh, the grade of toxicity there. Also interestingly in BILEAVE, because we knew hyperglycemia is a known on-target effect, as I said, uh, aggressive management with metformin and other oral hypoglycemic agents actually showed that in that trial, the number of patients who discontinued for hyperglycemia was quite a bit less than was seen in the SOLAR1 trial while we were gaining experience in how to manage hyper hyperglycemia. Since the publication of Solar One, we have incorporated the use of alpelacib into our patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer, which is the largest subgroup of metastatic breast cancer patients we see. So it's a quite large subgroup. So the first thing we do is we're testing every uh, metastatic breast cancer patient with a comprehensive genomic profile to pick up mutations such as PIK3CA because there are now drugs that actually work in these settings. And so if we know uh, ahead of time that a patient has a PIK3CA mutation that is likely to be impacted by a Pelicib, we'll typically give first-line therapy with a CDK4-6 inhibitor and endocrine therapy. And then as per Solar 1 and now by the BILEAVE trial, which gives us a greater comfort that patients who have previously been exposed to CDK inhibitors actually do get benefit from alpelacib and fulvestrin. That has become my standard second line therapy for patients uh, who have this mutation. Mm -hmm.